Hey, what you reading for? Do I want to read these new releases? Well, that is the question that uh, I'm going to try to answer. In this video, we'll take a look at some, some books that are meant to come out in the coming months. I will share with you uh, my prior experiences with the works, with the work from these authors. We'll take a look at the synopses and weigh them against uh, my various biases to determine if I do or do not want to read these upcoming releases. So go ahead and uh, hit that like button. Um, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, what are you doing? Just to hit the subscribe button. And while you're doing that, I will hand things over to the great American composer John Adams for the intro sequence, sequence and I will see you on the other side to look at some um, new releases. <laughs> Okay, first up we have Horror Movie by Paul Tremblay. So this is exciting because I think Paul Tremblay is a very good writer. He's very popular too. I've read three books from Paul Tremblay. Two, uh, two I really liked, which were uh, A Head Full of Ghosts, five stars. Uh, and then uh, Disappearance of Devil's Rock, four stars. And then I also read uh, Cabin at the End of the World, and that did not work on me at all. Uh, but still, two out of three, I think, is a good percentage, uh, especially for me. Uh, I can be kind of a grumpy reader, kind of demanding. Uh, two out of three is good. So uh, I like Paul Tremblay, and I would call myself a fan. However, this book is, uh, it has on the cover a VHS tape, and it's called Horror Movie. So I'm thinking it's going to play to uh, nostalgia or horror movies and now I did grow up with uh, I did grow up watching horror VHS but I don't have nostalgia for it so it looks I'm thinking it's probably gonna be one of those referential horror books and there have been a lot of referential horror books put out recently um, kind of what Scream did for horror movies in the 90s we're seeing a lot of that in publishing in these last few years and uh, that's not really a selling point on me uh, it's not exactly a, it's not a deal breaker either. I mean a head full of ghosts was very referential and I loved that book But it's not really a selling point um, The synopsis says that it's a chilling twist on the cursed film genre Okay um, Cursed film genre uh, That doesn't really excite me to be honest with you uh, So the title the cover the synopsis none of those are really working for me I'm going to pass on this one for now, but I do like Paul Tremblay, so it's on my radar, and we'll see what other people have to say about it. Moving on. Next, we have The Road to the Country by Chigozie Obioma. So I'm going to put this on my TBR immediately, just based on the name uh, Chigozie Obioma. A few years ago, I read um, his first book, uh, The Fisherman, and I loved it. thought it was excellent. So I've been meaning to read more from him. And uh, there you have it. He's coming out with a new book. And this, I think, is coming out today, actually, June 4th. Oh, I forgot to mention that Paul Tremblay's horror movie is coming out June 11th. June 11th is the day I'm leaving this place, this uh, the south of France. And I'm very much looking forward to getting out of here. Anyway, but it could be a horror movie. Right? I don't know what, what awaits me in Latvia. I've never been to Latvia. Anyway, uh, The Road to the Country by Chikozi Obioma. Yeah, I love The Fisherman, um, so I am definitely going to read this book. However, the synopsis does tell me that it is about, uh, that it's set in the 1960s during the uh, Nigerian Civil War. So that sounds like it's going to be a tough read. Um, I do not want to spend time in a Nigerian Civil War. I'm still recovering from the uh, Ethiopian Civil War in the 1970s that I experienced last summer with um, Maza Mengiste's uh, Beneath the Lion's Gaze, which I thought was very good too. But one uh, African Civil War a year, I think that's my limit. And even that, I don't know if that's sustainable. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna read this one. It might not be right away, but I'll read it this year, I think. 
Uh, have you read uh, Chigozi Obioma? I think you should, if you like uh, African literature, um, yeah, The Fisherman, I think. I think for English language, African literature, I can't think off the top of my head of any book I have liked more than that one. So, so I'm excited to read another offering from him. He's a very, very talented writer. Moving on to the month of July, uh, we have a, a book I'm very excited about, The Drowning House by Cherry Priest. It's a release date set for July 23rd. I've only read one other book from Cherry Priest, and that was The Toll, which I thought was excellent. And I had been looking forward to reading more from her, except the other books in her catalog really didn't, didn't speak to me. It's like a lot of witchy stuff, and I'm not really into witches. So she's coming out with The Drowning House, uh, which has me excited. However, this book is being put out by Poisoned Pen Press, and they are a publishing house that deals exclusively, really, with mystery books. So I'm sure there are some horror elements in this book, but it's probably a horror-mystery hybrid leaning heavily on the um, mystery aspect. Mystery is not really a genre that, that really speaks to me. A violent storm washes a mysterious house onto a rural Pacific Northwest beach, stopping the heart of the only woman who knows what it means. Her grandson, Simon Culpepper, vanishes in the aftermath, leaving two of his children, childhood friends, to comb the small isolated island for answers, but decades have passed since Melissa and Leo were close, if they were ever close at all. Now they have to put aside old rivalry, rivalries and grudges if they want to find or save the man who brought them together in the first place. And on the way, they'll learn a great deal about the sinister house on the beach, the man who built it, and the evil he's bringing back to Morrowstone Island. Well, that was a relatively confusing uh, blurb, and I did not do a great job reading it either. Um, yeah, so it's mystery-related. Uh, I think I'm... I do want to read more from Cherry Priest. That's probably not the book that I'm going to have my second cherry priest experience with though but it's on my radar if it gets a good buzz um yeah who knows all right moving on also we have uh joe r lansdale sugar on the bones the release date set for july 16th i recently had my very first joe r lansdale experience it was like a few weeks ago two weeks ago i read uh his hit from 1988 i believe um the drive-in. And I thought it was excellent. Loads of fun. So I want to read more from him. And he's put out a lot of books. A lot of books. And lo and behold, he's putting out another one. This one, I think, is uh, very much a mystery. In fact, on Goodreads, the only genre mentioned is mystery. And it's also number 13 in the Hap and Leonard series. So I don't know if I want to jump into a series on number 13. And I'm not excited about the mystery genre. So I'm going to pass on that one. But very similar to Cherry Priest, I need to have another Joe R. Lansdale experience. Probably not going to be with that book. And we have A Sorceress Comes to Call by T. Kingfisher. Uh, release date set for August 6th. A few months ago, I had my first uh, T. Kingfisher experience with A House of Good Bones. And I enjoyed it. Um, I think it was clear that she's a, she's a good writer, a good storyteller. However, it did feel like empty calories. It is not a book that challenged that challenges the reader at all. Um, it's just kind of fun fluff. And I, I kind of want to be challenged. You know, if I'm going to put in the hours to read a book, I want to be entertained, sure. But more so than that, I want to be challenged. And that book didn't do it for me. So I'm not super eager to have another T. King, T. King Fisher experience. But I don't have bad things to say about her. This is also being, uh, well, the blurb tells me it's a dark retelling of the Brothers Grimm Goose Girl. I don't know what Goose Girl is, um, but I know what Brothers Grimm is. And retellings, oh, really, that's not, that's a tough sell on me. A retelling is a tough sell on me, although I have had good experiences with retellings. Uh, eventually, I'll have a second T. Kingfisher experience, but I don't think it's going to be with a Brothers Grimm retelling. So I'm going to pass on that. 
Moving on, we, I am very excited about this next one. Dear Hana by Zoe Stage or Zoe Stage. I'm not sure. I'm sorry, Mrs. Stage or Miss Stage. <sighs> Zoe Stage. Uh, this is set for August 13th. Um, I have read one other book. This is her third book, I believe. I read her first book, Baby Teeth, and I thought it was really good. It was really good. And this actually is a sequel to Baby Teeth. Baby Teeth is basically uh, the story of a young couple, um, married couple, and they are raising a young girl, and they discover that the young girl is a sociopath. So, uh, they, they uh, well, I won't tell you how it ends, but this is the story of this uh, sociopath. His name is Hannah, and this is maybe 20 years later, I think. Well, she's in, a, she's in her 20s. Hannah is no stranger to dark thoughts. As a young child, she tried to murder her own mother. Uh, but that was more than 16 years ago. Okay. Water under the bridge. An extensive therapy and writing letters to her younger brother. Oh, she has a younger brother. Nice has since curbed those nasty tendencies. Oh, that's nice, man. So this is a beautiful story of uh, redemption and recovery. Now 24, Hannah is living an outwardly normal life of domestic content. Seems like a contradiction, domestic content, but maybe it's not. Married to real estate agent Jacob. Well, that's, that's enough to turn anyone into a murderer, isn't it? She's also stepmother to his teenage daughter, Joelle. Okay, now they're just tempting her. They're just begging for her to kill, aren't they? Who names their daughter Joelle? He's a, who's the sociopath in that relationship, right? They live in a beautiful home, and Hannah loves her career as a phlebotomist. I don't know what a phlebotomist is. Let's look it up. Oh, so phlebotomist is a person who is trained to take blood from a patient. Um, I mean, how difficult could that be? Do you really need to be trained? I mean, you could have it explained to you. I don't know if trained is the right word. Okay. Fancy word for uh, something that's probably not that fancy. But okay, fair enough. I mean, I'm sure there are good ways to take blood and bad ways to take blood. Um, but anyway, okay. A bit on the nose to have the sociopath turn into a phlebotomist. Uh, a job perfectly suited to her occasional need to hurt people. And like her husband is a real estate agent, so they, they have a lot in common there. But when Joelle begins to change in ways that don't suit Hannah's purposes, her carefully planned existence threatens to come apart. With life slipping out of her control, Hannah reverts to old habits, determined to manipulate the events and people around her. And the only thing worse than a baby socio sociopath is a fully grown one. I don't know, a baby socio sociopath sounds pretty bad. With his dark humor and chillingly seductive protagonist, Dear Hannah is a standalone sequel sure to thrill returning and new readers alike. So a very domestic setting, which is not super exciting, but based on the strength of the... Um, of her uh, first book, Baby Teeth. I am going to read this. Um, it's set for August 13th. I'm going to see if I can't find a way to get it sooner than that, actually. To be perfectly honest with you, wish me luck. I don't want to wait till August. Next up, we have The House of Last Resort by Christopher Golden. Okay, I had my first Christopher Golden experience last year with Ararat, which was a very silly book about uh, demons on a mountain. Super silly. I did not go, I, I went into it blind. I didn't know that it was gonna be super silly. So I didn't react that well to it. Um, so I'm not uh, super excited about reading another Christopher Golden book, although he's quite popular and it's you know probably not fair to judge an author on one book. However, this book is also about demons. Uh, I'll be honest with you, uh, I think demons are kind of silly and kind of stupid. Be and I think that because I am not a child. Uh, so this is a story about um, this American couple, or couple. They get offered to buy a house in Italy for one euro and they say, yeah, let's do that. Which I can't blame them. I would buy a house in 
for one year, even if it was in Italy. Um, so they get to the house, and apparently the house has uh, some demons in it or something. There's references to the church. Uh, so far, the reviews are not positive. It has 741 reviews, which is a lot for a book that isn't out yet. Wow, that's a lot of reviews. Average star rating is 3.23, which is crazy low. But I did not like Adarat, so I'm going to pass on this one. Moving on to October. Now, October has two books I am excited about. We have The Queen by Nick Cutter. Now, I've read three Nick Cutter books. I read the first three, uh, The Troop, which I really liked. It's a fun kind of body horror. It has slasher elements and it has like a, the evil military trope to it and, and isolation. It has a lot going for it for a fun horror book. I liked it a lot, actually. And the second book, The Deep, is one of is easily the most claustrophobic book I've ever read, and I thought it was quite scary. So it was a fun read. I had a good time with that. And then his third book, Little Heaven, is my favorite of them all. It has a cult, and it has um, it has evil kids, which I like, and there's a kind of like a Western aspect to it. So it has a lot going for it. Great characters. Good fun. So I am definitely a confirmed Nick Cutter fan. He's three for three on me. So I'm going to read, I would read The Queen blind. Um, but this has, but I did look at the uh, synopsis anyway for the purposes of this video. And it turns out this book is told, uh, the events in this book cover um, just a 24 hour period. It's what's called in, the in theater a Nick Themerol. And uh, I really like that. I like that kind of, not necessarily fast paced, but a really tight, uh, tight timeline. It's really good. So we have on a sunny morning in June, Margaret Carpenter wakes up to find a new iPhone on her doorstep. She switches it on to find a text from her best friend, Charity Atwater. The problem is Charity's been missing for over a month. Um, most people in town, even the police, think she's dead. Margaret and Charity have been uh, lifelong friends. They share everything, know the most intimate details about one another, but Charity carries a secret that even she is unaware of, a secret engraved into her DNA helix. I've never heard that expression before. Engraved into her DNA helix. That's nice. I like that. Helix is not a word I get to use very often. Oh, that's, that's cool. For Charity is also known Subject 6. Also known as Subject 6. The crown jewel of Project Athena. Okay, so I, I kind of wish, I'm kind of wishing that I, I hadn't read this uh, synopsis um, because I'm gonna, I was going to read it anyway. And so far this is sounding a little too sci-fi for me, but I'll read it anyway, regardless. A clandestine, unorthodox gene manipulation experiment. As opposed to the uh, orthodox clandestine gene manipulation experiments. The brainchild of tech titan Rudyard Crate. And when Charity's gene sequencing actualizes during a traumatic event at a high school party, it sets in motion a chain of events that will end in tragedy, bloodshed, and death. Okay. To be honest with you, the synopsis is not speaking to me, but I have faith in Nick Cutter. I am putting my trust in his capable Canadian hands, and I'm going to read it as soon as it comes out, if not uh, before. Uh, and now Charity wants Margaret to know her story, the real story. Okay. Yeah, Nick Cutter has not let me down yet, and I don't expect him to let me down. So even though that sounds a bit sci-fi and a bit... A little bit more on the action, and I prefer the horror to be more psychological. I'm sure it's going to be great. I'm sure I'm going to love it. So I look forward to reading that. And next up, we have Dogs and Monsters by Mark Haddon. Now, I had my first Mark Haddon experience a few weeks ago, and I read his first book, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, and I thought that was excellent. Loved that book. It was inventive. It was um, it was emotional. Good read. 
So I definitely want to read more from him. This is a short story collection. And it's a short story collection, short stories that are based on Greek uh, myth, Greek myths. Uh, deeply human stories that use Greek myths and contemporary dystopian narratives to examine mortality, moral choices, and the many variants of love. Okay, so Greek myths, I don't, I know very little about Greek myths. That is not really a selling point to me. However, it seems like every time I accidentally read a story that is based on a Greek myth, uh, I end up liking it. I can think of Home Fire, which I thought was excellent, which is a modern retelling of uh, Antigone. And last year, maybe two years ago, I read uh, Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Fantastic, five star. So uh, it seems like that works on me, the retelling of the Greek myths. So a short story collection is going to be a tough sell on me. A dystopian narratives, dystopian doesn't really eh. examine mortality. Ooh, no thank you. Uh, more, I prefer to ignore mortality. Moral choices, I prefer immoral choices, if I'm being honest. And many variants of love. <clears throat> wow, they are not doing a good job selling this book on me, are they? Uh, I do want to read more from Mark Haddon, so I'm going to put this on my radar, and we'll see what the reviewers have to say. It comes out October 15th. Right now, it only has two reviews on Goodreads. They're not super enthusiastic. Uh, it's on my radar. We'll see. I do want to read more from him. Incidentally, some of you may be wondering, well, why do I have flowers in my hair? It's called branding. And I am excited about some of these books. I'm excited about Chigozie Obioma. I'm excited about uh, the sequel to Baby Teeth. I'm excited uh, about another Nick Cutter book. So there's a lot to look forward to. Are you excited about any of these books, any of these authors? Are you excited about Edifice Complex? Exploring a man's erotic obsession with a residential building under threat of demolition? Edifice Complex, the horror literary hybrid that redefines what is meant by homesick. Are you excited about it? Or are you sick of me mentioning it at the end of every video? Because I'm kind of getting sick of it too. But let you me know if there are any new releases that you are excited about. And I always love hearing from you and connecting with you in the comment section. Thank you for watching. I'll see you at the next video.